Everybody excited for Christmas? Yeah! Awesome. Let's start uh, by talking about some of our favorite Christmas traditions. What do you guys love to do at Christmas time? Yep. Yep, Chinese food. That is a wonderful Christmas tradition. Over here. Secret Santa, that's always great. Last one, right there. Oh, right here, it's pointing to you. Did you have the same one? Okay, uh, right there. Yeah. Gingerbread houses, yeah, those are fantastic. I love those. Yeah, I also I love Christmas lights. I, I mean, I think we all enjoy opening presents, right? But uh, one of my favorite Christmas traditions that we do as a family uh, we, on Christmas morning, we start by reading our passage that we are going to be reading today, uh, John 1. We are going to only be doing 1 through 5, but every Christmas morning we read all the way through verse 18, and it talks about Jesus coming in the flesh. So if you guys will quickly turn over to John chapter 1, I'll read the first five verses, and we're going to talk about why Christmas matters why it's important that we have Christmas. It's not about the gifts, it's not about Santa, it's not about, it's not even about celebrating with family. It's about who we are celebrating. All right, when you guys get to John chapter one, please raise your hand for me so I know that everybody is there. All right, oh, you guys are quick. Okay, John chapter one, verses one through five. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Can you guys still hear me? Sorry, I think my microphone got tucked inside my sweater. That was probably bugging you guys. Um, all right, so it opens up with these familiar words. Tell me if you guys have heard it before. In the beginning. Genesis 1.1. Can somebody tell me what Genesis 1.1 says over here? Yeah. That's right. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. John opens up his gospel in the exact same way that the Bible opens up, in the beginning. But what's different about Genesis is he doesn't jump straight into creation. He jumps into who was in the beginning. In the beginning was the Word. Have you guys heard that before? In the beginning was the Word? You guys know what it means? Yeah? That's right, the word is Jesus. Now, the Greek word that is translated as word is the Greek word logos, which means word, message, or logic and reason. Now, there was a philosophy at the time from the Greeks that there was uh, logic, reason, personified. What John is saying is that that is Jesus. Jesus is the divine word. He's the divine message from God. He is the logic of God. And so anytime we try to think through issues, we are trying to utilize logic. And logic should always line up with God and what he has said and what he has revealed. That's what true logic will uh, point us to. So in the beginning was the word. Notice that. Jesus was in the beginning. He did not begin to exist at all. He has always been. He did not begin to exist when he was born. He existed before his, verse, his birth. Let's turn quickly to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. We are going to hear about this word who has always existed, and we are going to hear about why he came to be in the flesh. It says, He, that is Jesus, was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest 
in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. So what's the purpose of Christmas? Why was Jesus born? He was born that you would believe. He was born that you would be reconciled to God, that you would have faith in him and be saved. As we just sang about in Hark the Herald Angels Sing, born to give them second birth. That's why Christmas matters. The whole reason we have Christmas is to celebrate that God came in the flesh to save us from our sins. Now, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, Jesus, the Son of God, was with God, and the Word was God. Now, there's, there's something important to, to recognize here. Jesus, the Son of God, is God, but he is not God the Father. He is not God the Holy Spirit. If we turn quickly again to Genesis chapter 1, verses, uh, starting in verse 1, we just uh, recited it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And next it says, The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. In the beginning, God the Father. In the beginning, the Word. And in the beginning, the Spirit. Father, Son, and Spirit, always existent in the beginning. And God said, let there be light. What do you call, what is it, when someone says something, what's coming out of their mouth? Words. How did God create the world? With his word. Who is the word of God? Jesus. God the Son is the word of God. Revelation chapter 19 verse 13 says that the name by which he is called is the word of God. And so what we've just discussed briefly is the doctrine of the Trinity. I'm sure you guys have all um, heard it from time to time here in our, our Compass Kidsmen. Um, but the doctrine of the Trinity is that God is uh, three persons, but one being. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are distinct, but they are also one. There are not three gods, there is one God. And again, the Son is not the Father, the Father is not the Spirit. There is one God. Back to John. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. Again, we just talked about Jesus is the word of God. God created all things by his word. Why? Why did God create the world in the first place? Well, Romans 11, verse 36. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. God created everything by himself and for himself. We exist to glorify God and enjoy him forever. That's why we were made. That's why this world was made. Everything we see, the, the, ch the chairs you're sitting in, the room we're sitting in, um, the country we live in, all of this whole world, everything we see and everything we don't see exists to glorify God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So Jesus made everything that exists, and that also means Jesus himself was not made, because without him, nothing was made. So Jesus is the creator of everything. God the Son is the creator of everything. How then should we live? As we receive gifts on Christmas, how should we use the things that we receive? As we um, take a Christmas break, how would sh should we use this extra time that God has given us? We should always be thinking to worship God, use what he's given us in worship of him. Everything we do, we can do to the glory 
of God. You can read your favorite books to the glory of God. Watch your favorite TV show to the glory of God. Play sports, play video games. Whatever hobby you have, do it to the glory of God because this is a gift God has given you. When you are in school, work hard to the glory of God. When your parents tell you to do something that you don't want to do, you remember God's commandment to honor your father and mother. And so you do so joyfully to the glory of God. And then it says, back in John, verse, uh, John chapter 1, verse 4, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And again, as we just sang in Hark the Herald, angels sing, Life and light to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Jesus came to save us. The creator of the world, the sovereign king of kings, was born, not in a palace, was born in a manger. The king of kings, to whom everything uh, belongs and everything was made for, came to the earth as a little baby and had his diapers changed. Let that sink in. The creator, the holy, infinite God, was a real baby. Everything that's true about little babies, apart from sin, was true of Jesus in the flesh. He humbled himself. Philippians 2 tells us that he emptied himself. And he took on the form of a servant. Why? so that we would be made right with him and that he would receive all glory. So we and everything else was created for him and he came to give us life and he came to give us light. He came to open up our eyes. So whenever you see Christmas lights, remember Jesus is the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness will not over come. And when we receive this light, when we receive this life from Jesus through faith, by repenting of our sins, trusting in Jesus Christ, he gives us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, all the fruit of the Spirit that is talked about in Galatians chapter 5. Those things are given to us in Christ. Now, Who is familiar with Psalm 16? Over here. Does anybody, has anybody memorized Psalm 16, verse 11? That's one of my favorite psalms. Anybody? It says this. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Raise your hand if you want to be happy. Raise your hand if for Christmas this year, the best gift you could receive is to be happy forever. I think so. I mean, that's what we want for Christmas. All the toys that we get, we want them to make us happy. We want to be happy. That's who we are as people. Where is pleasure found? At the right hand of God. Fullness of joy is found in his presence. Pleasures forevermore are found at his right hand. Now, what is at God's right hand? Over here? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. In Acts chapter 7, you guys remember the story of Stephen, right? Who is Stephen? Stephen. Yeah, he was one of the disciples. He, um, not one of the 12, but he was one of God's followers. And he believed in Jesus. He loved Jesus. And he got stoned. Do you guys know what stoning is? Yeah, stoning. That's when they throw these massive rocks at you until you die. And as he is dying, he looks up into heaven, Acts 7, 56, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand 
of God. So he looks up into heaven and he sees the right hand of God. Jesus standing there. What's at the right hand of God? Pleasures forevermore. So in the midst of death, he's able to see pleasures forevermore. And the moment that he dies, he goes up to be with his Savior, who's sitting at the right hand of God. So what I want you guys to remember, that Christmas, not about the toys, not about the songs or the snow, which admittedly, coming from California, the snow is pretty nice to have at Christmas time. Um, it's not about that. It's not about the lights. It's not about Santa. It's not about any of that stuff. Christmas is about the Creator, the Son of God, coming to the earth to save you from your sins, to save you from the wrath that was coming for you apart from Christ. And not only does Jesus save you, the gift is not just to be saved from wrath. The gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is pleasures forevermore in Jesus Christ, who is our ultimate, true, final, lasting, perfect pleasure. Trust in Jesus today, and remember that at Christmas time, it's all about our King. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we were able to gather together this morning in anticipation for Christmas as we remember the birth of your Son, who is the Word, who was in the beginning with you, um, and is the true God, um, and he has come for a purpose, and that purpose was to be the king of the world. That purpose was to save all of his people, to not leave us in darkness, but to give us life and light and pleasure and joy forevermore. So help us today as we go out into the rest of um, this week and the rest of the, the, the ending of, of 2023 and uh, into the coming 2024. Help us to remember that Jesus Christ is our treasure. He is our joy. He is everything that we need, and uh, in him we have fullness of joy. We thank you for the amazing gift of your son. In Jesus' name, amen.